My odds are 1 to 23. You guys, if you bet on me and I win, you'll become a millionaire. One, two, three. Keep it going now. This is going to be awesome here, and uh, the game should be beginning shortly. So, you know, you know Charlie better than any one here at the chess.com streaming community. How how uh, how pumped is he to be back here uh, in Pog Champs? And and uh, what what chances you give him to maybe be one of the better players? He's definitely pumped. That I know. He's also definitely nervous. And I always point this out: these uh, stars, these streamers, they are used to broadcasting to millions and millions of people, Danny. But there's something about sitting behind a chessboard be it a virtual chessboard or a real chessboard that brings out all the anxiety. And I actually really like that. So Charlie, he's experienced. He knows what this is like. At the same time, uh, we're going to watch his time consumption. And uh, yep. I don't know too much about Code Miko, but I think she's put in the work. Well, right now she started out pretty, pretty well. She played some natural developing moves, right? I mean, this is um, not the most traditional approach against a Sicilian, and, and Charlie handles it like a pro with e6 and d5. But but there's some risk in an opening like this. If if Miko can can play aggressively in the center early on, maybe she'll maybe she'll be okay here. Yeah, for sure. Uh, she needs to strike in the center. D4, uh, get her pieces out quickly. Rookie one, she goes d3. She's doing everything right, preparing the development of her dark squared bishop, and Charlie quickly focusing on getting that king to safety uh, by castling. Yeah, bishop e seven, supernatural move. But this is this is a great start. I mean, even though we were saying d four, I actually kind of like that she played d three because it protects against c four. Maybe maybe she she would have got her bishop trap. So this is some really awesome principled chess. She's bringing out her pieces, and all right, now I'm nervous. I'm excited. I'm excited too. This is great, and they're both getting their pieces out, doing everything right. Miko brings her last piece out. Charlie still has that dark uh, light squared bishop to bring out. Uh, which he can put on a bunch of different squares. And um, they are following the fundamentals to the letter, Danny. Yeah, and, you know, something about the way she's playing, too, just the tempo of it, right? Even if this isn't most, the most traditional approach against Charlie Sicilian, she's playing all these developing moves with confidence. If you look at the fact that she has nine and a half minutes, so I'm going to do the early kind of Hikaru call to action and just say I, I kind of think she's underrated it at 333. He tends to kind of look at the ratings and see how they play. And I, I, I would say now that she's probably underrated at 300. She absolutely is. And I completely agree with you. Just by these first moves, uh, she's showing complete command of the fundamentals. And uh, you don't do that, you know, if, you're, if you've had one chess lesson. So she's definitely been putting in the work. Now, Charlie... Um, I'm going to be straight up with you, Danny. He, he has a big weakness in terms of his time consumption. Uh, when he's playing casually, uh, he, he plays confidently, but when he's on the big stage, sometimes he freezes. So we'll see whether he can, uh, he can control that here in this game. I'm not going to do anything too crazy here. He's ruminating. Deep in his thoughts here, Danya. So deep he can't express them. <laughs> so deep he can't express them. Right? I'm just going to say we don't wow, care about double pawns and go Whoa. for it. What's going on? What? Uh, did that just oh. happen? Let's let's come back here to the main board. And I, he well, played bishop f4 <laughs> in point one. I'm pretty sure she had accidentally clicked it for a pre-move or she or she was pre-moving which would be you know kind of a surprise kind of uh you know high level play there for her to pre-move and and maybe not a very smart one with with charlie playing b5 but let's throw to code miko now for the first time and see what she's thinking about it's okay it's fine oh my god here he comes here comes the pummeling guys um, <laughs> the pummeling I have not been looking forward to, but kind of, yes. Oh, Jesus. And they're both That's so scary. Oh, All right, uh -oh. well, I guess we'll have to. Oh, oh, Jesus, that's not to. good. Um, um, you know what? You know what, guys? You know what? I'm just... Spence. 
I'm just gonna go here. Not a great move. Hey, yeah. uh, more than six moves, move, okay. Probably does it. Alright. Now Queen takes knight. That's what she's missed. Oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. <laughs> shut up, guys. Shut up. Shut up, 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 okay? She's <laughs> just playing so fast. That's, that's the thing that I would oh. advise her. Yep. Oh! I and guess I also did not see oh. that. Oh. Shut up. Shut up, everyone. Oh, wait, what? <laughs> oh! I didn't even see... Oh. I didn't even see... Hey! You know what, guys? You know what? We we did it! It was more than six moves. That's, that's for sure. Are we positive dreamers? Do we dream or do we meme? We do both. When we dream and meme at the same time, there's nothing we cannot do. We can achieve everything. You heard it. You heard it from Code Miko. If you dream and meme, anything's possible. Dreaming and memeing together is a win. Here we go. It's gonna be an awesome day. We got Mr. Beast and Ludwig up ahead. We got crazy stuff. Charlie plays E4. Here we go. And an E5 from Code Miko and the Vienna Gambit is what Charlie has been playing over the last couple of weeks. So that's where White goes F4 pretty quickly, but here he develops his bishop. Yeah, this is a really aggressive line, right? Obviously, when you play F4, at some point the F file will lead with a rook and bishop having a date right there on F7, or at least they hope to. The pressure becomes very, 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 very strong very quickly, depending on whether Black knows what to do. So uh, Miko already given it a think right here. Right. It's not the most common opening, which is part of the reason that uh, it's very effective, because if you can get your opponent out of their comfort zone pretty early and you know the ideas, you get a pretty big edge on the clock. And often that translates into an advantage over the board. Right. Well, now already White has the option. Play f4, and then you can also play d3 if you still want to sort of slow jam the mm -hmm. idea. Um, of course, you always have the option of going back into a more traditional kind of whatever that would be, two knights, four knights. Uh, uh, but no, as we already we already know because uh, because we have the prophet here. F4 is Charlie's weapon. What do you think <laughs> is going to happen at some point in the event when he plays against someone who's prepared for his Vienna? How's that going to go? Well, he's going to have to tighten up the screws. The thing with these openings, right? If they work out for you, you can score some quick victories. If you mess up the move order, you mess up one move, it's a double-sided sword, and you can get in trouble pretty darn fast. But uh, so far, Charlie's showing nice command of the principles, getting rid of the pin immediately. Yeah, and the risk, as you said, because if it goes Ooh. wrong, what you've done is open up a lot of dark squares. But okay, here we see an example of how it goes right. A lot, A lot of times, people don't really realize how aggressive this line can be and, and just like that your bishop is trapped yeah code miko bishop trapped on one side of the board and now it's trapped on the other side of the board in the other game and she does the right thing giving it up for a pawn if you're losing a piece you want to give it up for as much as possible yeah she takes it that's a good oh. move and i and i again i think the only mm -hmm. thing i would say is obviously it's hard you know when you when you feel like you're playing a, a stronger player but I think that she maybe, like we said in game one, thinks she's a little worse than she is and, and is playing kind of too fast. If she, if she slows down a little bit, you know, um, the, the openings she's had are very principled, right? She's gotten pieces out. She, she understands all of, those, all of those development kind of ideas. And we'll see if she gets castled here. It's the king out of the center. Yeah, she's, she's developing all her pieces. And you can't say it enough. It's not that easy to get into a situation where you have command of the principles. And... That's exactly what she has. Uh, maybe, again, maybe taking a little bit more time would have been good. But these unconventional positions, they can be hard to get your footing in. But other than that, you know, you could confuse her play for that of Magnus or maybe Gary Kasparov. Yeah, I mean, what would Gary Kasparov think about this position? Hmm, well, if only we had him on the show. But then he, 
it, um, this reminds me you know, of the match against uh, Anatoly Korpov, you know, and uh, in that match, you know, it was uh, back and forth, you know, back and forth game, but um, Koda Miko, you know, she, she knows <laughs> um, how to develop her pieces, you know, but um, like a good Russian schoolboy, you know. <laughs> Do you think do you think good Russian schoolboys, Gary? Spar is a busy would, man. <laughs> would, would good Russian schoolboys appreciate the VTuber experience? You think, Gary? And it, <clears throat> you know where I come from. You know, it's um, the VTuber. You know, I'm old school. You know, I like uh, flip phones. You know, notebooks. You know, but um, <laughs> I can definitely appreciate. You know, the the sort of the rise. You know, the AI. And you know, I've spoken about it. You know, in, in colleges. You know, before, but. Um, Overall, you know, I'm quite uh, approving of, you know, this trend. <laughs> okay, there you go. Thank you, Gary. Uh, we'll we'll uh, maybe check in with you a little bit later. All right, look at this move, knight h5 from her. But Miko Absolutely. puts the knight on h5, it opens up the check, and we see Charlie make his first kind of odd move of the day. Let's listen into code Miko and see if she sees the check and what she can do here. Drawing is important, but that's going to get that guy. So then you... Uh, no, I want to I wanna get rid of some of my... Some of my pieces are so stuck. Uh, the... That knight on H5. Exactly what I wanted to do when he oh. played knight H5. Mm -hmm. Oh, f**k! I know what he's trying to do. He's trying to... Okay, 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 okay. Wait, 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 wait. I get what he's trying to do. Um, pen on everyone, that don't worry. Don't, don't panic. Don't panic, everybody. Don't panic, okay? Don't panic. Don't panic. Nobody panic. It's okay. Nobody panic. I'm, I'm not either. Nobody panic. Uh, nobody <laughs> We're not panic. Panicking. I still um, don't um. understand why I can't move this, but... Um, nobody panic! Stop panicking! Okay, stop yelling! Danny, why stop are you panicking, panicking Danny? Stop Danny, panicking. why are you panicking? Now we'll see if Charlie can see how dangerous the G-File is. The uh, computer's actually announcing mate in six, but let's see what Charlie sees. Yeah, and, and what you can see here, white is up two pieces, and there's also this G-File. White's got a rook positioned and facing right at Black's king, and that pawn that is covering the king is very flimsy. You can attack that pawn with a variety of pieces. You can bring your bishop out all the way to h6, and the pawn can't capture just push the bishop up. because it is pinned to the king. Yeah, the... Oh. He's not He's not talking I don't know how best to approach this freedom. mate. This is something I also need to work on. I see a lot of different mating options here. I see a ton of mating options. <laughs> I just don't know, like, <laughs> the best and fastest way of doing it. I'm just gonna push it up. That's the best move. That's the fastest mate. Got it. He's it. Queen is untouchable because of the pin. To me, that looks okay. If she comes here, I can just take the bishop. He's nervous. He's worried there's a defensive resource somewhere. But there isn't any. I want to just you can take, take that, that with, with any book. of the three pieces, actually. Let me see. Doing her best, block the G file, but unfortunately, it's just hold the pin. Uh oh, yep. Now it's and now it's made on G seven, and there it is. Wow, that was a okay commanding attack there by Charlie. He did no, not real, <laughs> real talk. He was he was awesome. So, Charlie, just one quick question for you. Do you feel uh, similar to how you did in Pac Champs 1? Do you feel like that experience is making you less nervous, or is it uh, the sort of same kind of sensation? Oh, absolutely not. I think it's a lot more nerves this time because I won the, the loser's bracket, the consolation participation trophy bracket, and now I'm, like, almost expected to win some games, and I think that sucks. That shit is tough, man. <laughs> Having to play with, like, an expectation to do well. I'm super nervous to go against like literally chess Jesus himself. Mm. Um, but I was just really happy that I did more than six moves. Yeah, and, no, uh, I think that's great. That right? was one of the finest performances I've seen in Pog Champs. Typically, I'm slapping cheeks around six moves. You went all the way to like 12 <laughs> oh. in some cases. <gasps> Yay, that's why I'm saying go more. If we just do more than six. 
six moves we're winning for me today amen <laughs> exactly these were good games good start to the event and best of luck in, in the next round thank you so much Thank you. guys thanks for having thank me thank you